and welcome back to another Chinese food adventure. I am still in the beautiful Pingle. It's a county here in Guilin. And I was here last night at this restaurant and I came here to eat stuffed foods. It's very, very famous here in Pingle. But while I was here, I was also mesmerized by the other half of their menu, which looked to be like little snacks and pastries and jellies and like dim sum. And it really reminded me of like Cantonese yum cha. And I asked the lady, how are these usually eaten? And she said, at breakfast, alongside something called yo cha, which is oil tea. This oil tea is something I've been seeing around a lot here in Guilin, but I haven't had the chance to try. She describes it to me as the Guangxi style coffee. So needless to say, I was very, very intrigued. And I said, I'd come back this morning for some breakfast here. So let's try it. Some uh, typical Pingle style breakfast. What? <laughs> Forget the difficulties of solo travel. It's solo eating that's the hardest part for me. I want to try everything, but my stomach only has a certain capacity. She mentioned last night she might be able to make me a little tasting plate where I can try one of a few different things rather than order four entire dishes that I won't be able to finish. And here it is. I've got four different snacks here that I can pair with my yo cha oil tea here. So not gonna lie, it's kind of giving me doujie vibes. This gave me major flashbacks of Ayu cooking doujie, the Beijing fermented mung bean juice back in our hutong in Beijing. But the fact is, this doesn't smell anything like doujie. It's very appealing, it's got this salty and slightly herbal smell. And for those of you wondering, is there actually oil and tea in oil tea? This is oil. It's a dish most often consumed at breakfast and lunchtime, very rarely consumed at dinner, I've been told. You can't drink it too close before bedtime because it'll keep you awake because there's actually tea leaves in this. Uh, a bit of spring onion is added too. Then you've got this bowl of crunchy goodies. We've got puffed rice, peanuts, and these larger, super crispy, slightly sweet balls. Basically, add as much or as little as you'd like. It reminds me a little bit of cereal, to be honest. So I'm gonna get a spoonful with a little bit of everything, a little puffed rice, a little of that bigger crunchy puff thing, a peanut, and of course some of that green soupy goodness there. I have to admit I was intrigued to finally try it. When researching this dish, I found articles online with titles like Yo Cha, Would You Dare Try It? And other sources describing its taste as distinctive, unique and strong, as well as the classic, you either love it or you hate it. Is this Yo Cha really as dramatic and divisive as the internet makes it seem? Time to find out for myself. It smells like, and bear with me here, it kind of smells like the chicken flavored two minute noodles. That flavor, let's see how it tastes. Mm. Oh, yum. First thing I really like are those little crunchy puffs. When I eat them, they really remind me of cereal and they're also a little bit sweet as well. So it gives a sweetness. Oh, those are really, really good. Even though it's like got oil in it and I can see the oil on the top of it kind of floating around, it's very refreshing and very light and it doesn't feel heavy on the stomach as you would imagine with something that is literally made with oil. And it does have a slight bitterness when you first put it in your mouth. And I guess that's to do with the tea leaves in there. There is tea in this. Um, but at the end, after that bitterness goes away, you get that chicken noodle flavor. <laughs> it's just like a salty cereal. We have a cereal in Australia called rice bubbles. And this tastes exactly what those rice bubbles taste like when you put it in the milk and it gets a bit soggy. So when I'm eating this and I've got a little bit of that crunch from the big one and I've got those little rice puffs there as well. And then that salty milk, I guess you could say. <laughs> It just is a, a little nostalgic, actually. I also saw on the menu they serve a yo cha hot pot that you can order with fish or chicken or offal. I definitely want to try this next time. And they've given me this lovely plate of some different snacks. This one is very famous. It's called Aye Baba. And I've been seeing it all around the place as well. And same as the yo cha. I just haven't had the time or the moment or the feeling that like this is the time for me to eat the Aye Baba. But this is the time. This is my last day in Guangxi. So um, I'm trying all the things that I didn't have a chance to try in the last two weeks that I've been here. But before I could get stuck in, I was handed the phone. Apparently the boss wanted to speak with me. Uh, 
过去，你吃早餐好不好？哦，谢谢，谢谢老板。嗯，等一下过去。So in a fun turn of events, I was just speaking with the boss on the phone. He wants to treat me to breakfast, so he's actually on his way, and he wants to eat breakfast with me this morning, which I think is perfect because, firstly, I don't know much about these local foods. Like, I don't know how they're supposed to be eaten. I don't know what they're called. I don't know their history. And secondly, I'm just one person, so I only have a certain amount of capacity in my stomach. So if I eat with someone else, I can order more, I can eat more, and I can get more variety. So as far as I'm concerned, this is、uh, the perfect. The best case scenario. And also, as I found out ten minutes or so later when the boss arrived, this yuzhu is a dish designed to be shared. Yuzhu, is, 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 is,
green layer on top there, a little green layer on the bottom, and then inside, the oh. inside is what? Oh. So nearby here, there's another county of Guilin called Lipu. And in Lipu, they have what's known to be the best or some of the best taro in China. And the cuisine there is all about the taro, taro this, taro that. Unfortunately, I won't get the opportunity to go on this trip, but next time, next time I will be paying a trip to Lipu and trying all the taro. And that little green bit on the outside is slightly crispy. So when you bite into it, you have that contrast of the crispy and then the soft taro on the inside. The taro in this is so smooth and moist and sweet. But I have to say, I can't really taste the green tea in it. I can definitely taste the sesame. That's a very pr predominant flavor. And I get that texture of the taro in the inside, but no green tea, I'd have to say. It's very Moorish though. And of course, a bit of oil tea to wash down every mouthful. Oh, now we'll, we'll light in. I have to say, it does taste a lot better hot, which accounts for why it's sitting on a hot plate, constantly bubbling away. After four or five bowls of this, I could really feel that caffeine buzz. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of our Pinla breakfast food adventure. I have lots of takeaway to eat with me on the bus and even for dinner tonight. I'm heading back to Guilin City now, um, where I'm going to be catching a flight tomorrow back to Changchun. And I'm telling you, there's quite the temperature difference waiting for me there. But more on that in the Changchun videos I'll be posting on my channel in the coming weeks. It was so amazing to be here in Guilin for the last two weeks. I've learned so much, I've eaten so much. I I have had the best time and that is so much in part to the amazing people I've met, met along the way like my new friend here I will I will he would love it here so yeah thank you guys so much for watching along on this Guangxi or I guess more Guilin food adventure I didn't even really leave the city of Guilin in the two weeks I was here but that means that there's a lot more trips to Guangxi in the future a lot more to discover and I look forward to it so I'll see you next week from I guess Changchun bye guys <laughs>